being authentic is <laughs> that really can't go wrong in life in general. Be, you know, and that's that's a hard thing to do. Really uh, letting down your guard, taking down the masks, being vulnerable, and you know, seeing how the world accepts you or, or doesn't accept you. That's that's a difficult thing to do. And an, an, and an art, artist has to do it even more because we're putting out our stuff for the world to criticize. You know, so yeah, you got to find some confidence in there to just be like, "Fuck it, that's me," and just keep being you. <laughs> Shit's about to go down. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Chops and Tats with Aaron Della Vadova. I am stoked to announce that Solon Clothing is now a sponsor of the show. I've known Ryan and Jeremy for 20 plus years. Amazing human beings, huge supporters of the tattoo community. If you're a tattoo artist and you want to do a, a t-shirt design with Sullen, you can send that over to design at sullenclothing.com and they would love to see what you've got. Uh, again, thank you, Sullen, for your support. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jeremy. And now back to the show. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chats and Tats with me, your host, Aaron Della Vadova. I know a lot of people who watch this show. A lot of them are tattoo artists. A lot of them are collectors and are connoisseurs of tattoo artists. So, really give a shit about it and spend a lot of hours online on Instagram, seeing who's out there that's good and who isn't and whatnot. The guy I have on today is, I'm a huge fan of his work. I am a huge fan, have been for many, many years. In this industry, we hear the term neo-trad a lot. And, and you know, I don't like labels, but I think that's a label we could probably attach to his work. He can clarify that once he once we put him on here in a second. But in my opinion, I think he's probably one of the best neo-trad artists in the world. I think his work is impeccable, beautiful. It's got the best composition. His color choices are super unique to his palette. And I have a lot of respect for him because he held true to his style. This, you know, me, I'm jumping all over. It's just the way I think. I want to try doing this subject matter, then I'm way over here doing something else. And that's been me for 30 years. But this guy found a lane and he stuck in it. And because he did that, he was able to hone that particular style to perfection you know and i think so that's who you're going to meet today so without f further ado please welcome my good friend matt tischler how's it going how's it going dude good 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 <laughs> stoked to be here thank you i'm glad you yeah. came down yeah. not too far dana no, point no not too bad yeah so okay. you work at dana point tattoo uh -huh. in dana point yeah obviously uh -huh. how long have you been there i think i'm going on six years now Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. But you were tattooed in that area prior. In that, that area too. prior. Yeah. A little bit inland in like Lake Forest area. And then there was another little private studio shop that opened up in uh, Capo Beach. It's like in between Dana and San Clemente. Okay. Yeah. What does that take your total? Like how many years you've been tattooing now? I think I'm at a little over 14. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 30, brother. Crazy. I can't believe Crazy. it. Crazy. I can't believe I hit 14. Yeah. I, <laughs> I found some old machines the other day that had like numbers on it of the date. And I was like, wow. That's, that, by, that's crazy. It goes by quick. It goes by quick, man. That is so true. Yeah. At 51 right now, gosh, I just had a, my last week's show, I finished a bodysuit on a guy who I'd kind of been, t you know, not tinkering, but he moved to India. Then he came back Then he moved somewhere. The whole thing it took 17 years. Guy became one of my best friends, finished it on the show last week. And, uh, I cried. Like I had a, a, a moment because if one, I knew I'm probably not going to see him as much, but two, I was like, wow, I wonder how many more bodysuits I'll complete, you know, because the reality is my whole life, it was about time was endless. Everything was new. Starting this was new. Everything was a door being opened. And now they're like closing one by one. Now, I'm not saying that's completely closed, but let's face it. At some point, that door does close. Nobody tattoos bodysuits until the day they fucking die at 90 or whatever it is, Right. So it was just um, a reminder of, I don't know, just to uh, be grateful and appreciate each moment because one day you blink your eyes and it's fucking gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's Yeah, it's crazy. And especially, I mean, with these clients too, you, I mean, I can't imagine a bodysuit, but I mean, you work with these people for years and years. You build a connection and a friendship. And then, yeah, when it's done, you're just like, okay, like, bye, see ya. Bye, um, best friend sure, I've ever met. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like, I'll never see you again. <laughs> all right, yeah, see you later. Um, okay, cool. Um, that but is. hopefully, maybe you'll get another tattoo by me, but then you also kind of hope that they get other tattoos by other people by collecting and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. 
there's some, I, I, I still haven't unwound the whole, there, there's depth in there that I don't, you know, and maybe that leads me to one of the things I wanted to talk about today. And from your viewpoint, how would you describe, I mean, tattooing is obviously an art, art form, just like a lot of other art forms, but I believe it's wildly different for various reasons. What makes for you, what makes tattooing so different than painting and sculpting and anything else we can name right now? Besides the obvious, I mean, obviously it's the only one that involves ink and needles and permanent marking a person's tissue. But do you have any thoughts around what makes tattoos so special? Man, I mean, the, I think the pain that you actually put some of these, the, the things you put your clients through, especially if you're doing big projects, it's, it's pretty crazy that they allow you to do that to them, you know? And also the, um, the risk factor you get with tattooing of mistakes. And I mean, you can, you know, there's no, no erasers. Ra there's, there's no erasers. Right. So, um, and I mean, we all make mistakes. Um, it's just, and you're always going to make mistakes. That's the thing that's right. like, you can't, it, nothing's perfect, you know, but just that factor and the pressure of messing up a tattoo or doing that, you know, is, is makes it a lot more stressful, you know? So, and as I've gotten better and down the line more, I've definitely kind of prepped a lot more back in the day. I mean, I did prep work, but not as much. Now I try to make sure I, I go into every tattoo fully with color choices and whatnot and hoping for the best, you know, even though you can't control all that because you just don't know how a lot of people's skin is different. You know, it's, that's that's the crazy thing is, is you pick some colors and that color might be true on one person, but then it on another person, it's just totally different. It has a little bit more of a pink hue or a yellow hue or brown. And then you're, it just makes the tattoo look way different. Or, or their body fights it yeah. instead of getting that creamy yellow you were looking for, you, they get blotchy yeah. because they're, yeah. maybe they have an Indian heritage or something and more melanin and you're like, fuck. Yeah. And then you kind of, so, I mean, I still plan a lot, but then you also have to kind of adjust on the fly with a lot of things too. If, Cause I mean, realistically it doesn't go to plan most of the time. Like it, you kind of, okay, well that color looks a little bit different than I was hoping. Maybe brighten up this other color to help kind of balance it out or I'll, dumb down this the next color around it to kind of bring it together but it's a lot of on the fly and it's a lot of trial and error you know i mean i did a lot of rough tattoos back in the day and um me too <laughs> yeah yeah and just and just learning i mean we're always learning i'm still learning you know so i think that's the thing you mentioned about my style and sticking with it and not branching out as me going off and like changing styles and whatnot and i mean i've always loved the style i do anyways but like i'm still you know just still chasing that Perfect, perfect kind of, and it's not going to happen. But it's still like I, I every tattoo can be better. You know, like if I did the same back piece I did, you know, yesterday on tomorrow, whatever. It's 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 going to be. You know, I'm going to learn from what I just did, and the yeah. new one will most likely be better from that. So for me, bouncing around style wise, I just I get I'm not going to do that. You know, so I think it's a wise choice, dude. Yeah. I regret not doing it. I just came from such an old you know, 30 years ago and somewhere it was just ingrained in me that you walk, you talked, you just asked them, what do you want? And whatever they said, you went and made it as best you could and gave it to them. And I never broke that mold. I mean, somewhere along the line, my stuff looked a way that maybe you might say that's Aaron Della Vadova. But I mean, I really have a lot of respect for the guys that just stuck in one genre. And honestly, in the early years of Guru, I criticized a few guys that were doing that. I was like, you can't just do that one thing, man. How are you going to make a living? You got to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then as the years went on and Instagram became a thing and I was dead wrong. People wanted to go to an artist who showed them, I do this as they should. I mean, why would you go to the jack of all trades when you can go to the guy who only does classical Japanese instead of asking some dude who is going to go home and try to figure it out, you know? Exactly. I mean, well, Instagram changed everything. Oh God. Yeah. It, Instagram was like, uh, my timing on Instagram was too, was perfect as mm -hmm. well like i mean with my style and me growing um as instagram was growing too like i think that was i mm -hmm. got fortunate with that because i look at it now at i mean instagram is not everything but it's a lot uh, or social media in general you know and i look at it and me and some coworkers talk about this is if started from scratch now and we still did the same style of tattoos it would be so much harder to build a following now oh, on yeah. social media because well, you're competing with you're just with everybody and you have these guys that are two years in that are just crushing it, you know? So mm. it's a lot tougher now. So I am very fortunate to win. I kind of grew with, with Instagram as my style kind of progressed through the years and, and whatnot. So I get that. And yeah, it is a big deal, man, because it's, it's a lot of things happening simultaneously. Like 
I was talking to somebody the other day about this and I'm like, you know, for my whole career, I think the main thing that I had going for me that kept me popular and booked out and all those things was I could just draw and illustrate something cooler than the next guy. Not every guy, but most of them. So if you wanted something, you wanted a snake, you wanted a skull, you wanted to look fucking dope. You had to find somebody like me that could kind of get crazy with it and make it look dope. And now even the iPad, like it's become way easier for somebody who's relatively talented to rip a very cool design. Not only can they do it on their iPad, they can make adjustments super quickly. They can pull in reference from everywhere. Plus the access to reference. I mean, you get up in the morning as a young tattooer, you open up 20 of your favorite tattoo artists, you see all the shit they're doing and you leapfrog from where they're at forward from that. So everyone's progressing so hyper fast and you, it's not uncommon nowadays. I see a two year, tat, even one year tattooers. You're like, what? That dude's been tattooing for one year. In my day, it was like 10 years minimum to even be worth a shit, you know? And it's, um, it does make you get into this kind of thing. Like where is tattooing going? And you know, <laughs> we'll just do it. You know, the other day I always bring up AI cause I think AI is a big part of this. So this client, I'm going to show you this. This happened to me just the other day. This was really cool. He, I tattoo him tomorrow, actually. So he has, he's a computer guy, and he has some app where you can just give it a sketch, and it'll just spit back out some really cool rendering of that sketch. Um, and he did it. So I had sent him a sketch of a sleeve that's currently in progress on his arm. And uh, he put it into this app. And just bear with me. And this is what it did, dude. Look at this shit. You're going to die. Where are you? Oh, here it is. So on the left is my sketch. And that that rent, you know, whatever piece of art on the Wild. other side, that, that happened in under, you know, 34 seconds. That's that's crazy. And it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's my style. That's like a almost portrait level. I that's mean that's wild. But yeah, I'm just and I see this and I'm thinking, so what? is going to sep like the thing that separated me does it even separate i mean i'd still know there's other things there's composition there's technical application but this was a big part of what separated us um and now it seems to be going away you know what do you think about that i think that's part of especially us is as being creative of like a client saying hey i want this this and this here on my arm or my back run with it you know mm -hmm. and i think that's part of the trust and what our clients kind of look forward to i think is, is not really knowing what they're going to get until they see that and trust our vision with mm -hmm. it and like yeah ai can can do that but still not you you know and like i don't i've seen a lot of ai stuff and i it definitely seems a little bit more on the realistic side mm -hmm. so i just and i also think so it's like you know say we spit out say someone types in uh lady face flowers animal or something for me or right. like a bird like stuff you tattoo. stuff i would tattoo right. a general thing i would tattoo and ai does a cool kind of neo piece so and then i have to tattoo that or say i wanted to tattoo that just to see that's still not my style so i feel like as i was tattooing that i would be kind of lost and questioning myself on how to tattoo because it's not I'm, i didn't draw this you know right, this right. is not like how I vision this tattoo. This is some something else, you know, it'd be like me trying to tattoo one of your tattoos almost like here's here's the drawing. So on that aspect, unless they go and end up AI end up doing the whole, you know, tattoo drawing to tattoo start to finish kind of deal, which I have a hard time seeing actually right now, but like, um, I don't know. Well, I mean, one thing though, you got to remember is I'm sure I could have, I can find an app where I could put in 20 tattoos that you did. And then tell it to do a lion head with a girl head. And, and then it'd probably spit out something that looks super tischler. It probably, yeah, for sure. You know, and so I'm a two year tattooer in Germany and I've got some guy going, I really like this guy's stuff. Okay, give me, give me two minutes. You'll, you'll have that for sure. I know. I, I mean, I don't like it. I fucking hate it. And, and it scares me too. I mean, luckily, I am a 30 year tattooer. I, I don't know if it's going to sink my ship. I think my ship has sailed. But I do look at the younger guys coming in, and I wonder what their edge will be if this is going to continue to propagate. I think the custom guys will be fine. The, the big the big men, the big uh, females and stuff out there. Um, but I think like the knockoff artists are just 
that the person that oh, okay i want this an aaron tattoo and like what well, you said here's boom do it i just and then, and most of the time they're not going to be the best artists that are tattooing that because right. i think a this is kind of harsh uh, not a real artist but like somebody that really has passion for tattooing wouldn't do that wouldn't do that they're going to want to draw it um they're going to want to put the effort in beforehand uh i mean I, I i think it's part of the process like it's it's part of the fun yes it takes a long time some of my drawings take longer than the actual tattoo but it's part of the creative aspect of of tattooing is is having us design it and draw it and stuff. I, I so, agree. I, mean, I totally agree. But I do I do wonder because, I mean, and then you could take that thing, like even that piece I just showed you, like he gave me that after I executed his tattoo. But if he had given me that before, I might have might have maybe, you know, at least used it as inspiration or mm -hmm. reference. And yeah. it would have changed maybe what I would have created. So yeah. now it's elevating me. You're, then you're like a cyborg. You're like, yeah. you're still a unique artist. You're still your individual self. Yeah but you're using the power of this new artificial intelligence yeah. to kind of raise you up mm -hmm. quicker and make your shit different. Maybe for idea aspect, you know, yeah. if you you wanted to have it kind of like give you, like say you want to do a Valkyrie, you know, sleeve or something like that with these aspects and objects and all that, you tell it, to, they might come up with a couple more ideas that might throw some light bulbs off in your head and then you'd be like, okay, well this, this and this, now I can, now I will take that and bit, Try, draw my version of this AI kind of like image off that, but it's not going to be that actual image. You know, it might, it might do something with like a feather or hair or placement of flowers and location, but then it's, they, they, uh, the AI can't, it's on the body too. So that's part of the, going back to the, how the tattoos are. It's, you have to fit the shape of the body and, and AI is, we're going to know what's kind of might sit best you know so having it on an image or on a piece of paper ai is it's not gonna then it's not gonna fully know exactly how it should should sit you know that's true but say i get that little app where it's the a human arm and you can spin it and then i just roughly sketch i want the bird here i want it to be about that, about that size i want it flying upwards i want this stuff the filigree coming down through and i want on the inside i want the face and i just get it roughed out pump it through the program it spits out this really cool looking thing. Then I take that thing and I change it, add to it, take away from it. I think we're going to see a lot of that fusion with it. And, you know, I, I have some friends that are deep in the um, animation world of digital art. And that's, that's what they're all telling me. They're like the, the artists of the future are going to be, you know, working with it. So, but yeah. I mean, look, there's always going to be the, the guy who's like, I don't do it that way. I'm yeah. analog and he'll be busy. He'll have his people. But uh -huh. the idea that a lot of young tattooers aren't going to be doing this, I just don't think it's true. Yeah. I think they already are. I, I think it's good in a way to, if you can use it, like we were saying, is maybe get ideas out of it. But for me to tell a program, this is what I want, um, and, and then have that print out and then me line draw, like trace off of that. Right. thing they gave me and then me put that on i don't know i me personally i would just feel so dirty like, dirty <laughs> yeah I, I, this is like i felt like i, I copied somebody you yeah, know like this yeah. is not me and i and i and it goes back to i mean each piece and i'm sure with you is that we do is is part of me it's like i put a lot of effort into this and that's part of the joy and stuff of of doing tattoos is that the amount of effort in my personal like vision of a tattoo and I would just feel so deflated and so just like I don't I I personally couldn't do it. I could do it maybe as like getting ideas um, down the road of like exactly like hey I want to do this kind of sleeve. What's this thing going to show me? It might look kind of cool. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll I can take some ideas off the image they they sent me. But to copy and paste what they or the AI drew, I, I don't know. I'd be, well, I'd, be I'd, it would be it would be tough for me. Oh, you yeah. would never yeah. do it. No, yeah. I, I mean I wouldn't either. I'm just. More bringing it up, like I'm trying to, in my mind, picture what does the tattoo industry look like in 10 years? And I know this stuff's here and I know it's going to get better, faster and cleaner every single day. So I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah. But I mean, and I use tattooing, but every creator out, out there is going through this. You know, painters. I mean, I just saw this gal on Instagram the other day. In fact, my friend, one of my good buddies who works at Adobe showed me to her. Her work is insane, dude. And she's drawing it on her iPad and she's drawing it, but... She's using all these different types of brushes and effects and you know, things that would be extremely difficult to do with pens and papers. And, and then when she's done, she gets it just right. She, they, they print that on a, on a piece of canvas. 
she's showing in these beautiful galleries in London, $50,000 a piece. Crazy. Yeah, it's all digital. But that's know. all through her though. Yeah, her she own. did draw. Yeah, she did draw, yeah. But um, some of that stuff they do on Procreate is mind boggling. I am sitting there drawing these these images and I'll go on sometimes like the Procreate, like uh, Instagram. This is insane. Do you use Procreate? I do Procreate, okay, yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah, that was another one I first got that. I remember my whole shop looking at me like, I was like the first guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many I was one of the get. first. I, I was judged, yeah. man. It was like, oh, what's he doing? Well, yeah. I will never do that. Yeah. I can't find anyone without it. It is a I, game changer. It yeah. is such a, it is such a game changer. And I mean, that goes, I'm not so structured into like what, whatever's going to give me the best tattoo and that best outcome, I'm going to do it, you know? So I know when the pens and the cartridges came along, um, if it's easier for me to, complete a better tattoo that way, then I'm going to do that, you know? So me too. Me too. I, I adopted those right out of the gates as well. Wow. I'm like, Oh, a machine that was going to run the same every time I pick it up mm -hmm. give me six of them right now. <laughs> serious, <laughs> serious. And then, yeah, not only the hand, just the weight and whatever. Um, but just having to swap machines out or having, you know, six to seven machines out on uh, your, your, I don't miss those days. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you do work with a, a wand or pen machine pen, with yeah. cartridges. Uh -huh. Yes. What, what, what are you using? I use a critical pen now, critical okay. torque pen. It's it's pretty new. Okay. Um, it's it's really good. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's similar. It's like um, direct drive, like a lot of the machines out mm -hmm. there. But I guess the difference between this one and a lot of the other direct drives is the cam is locked in. So a lot of times when the cam, say, hits the skin, uh, the cam will actually kind of like it kind of does a little wobble. So that gives you a little bit more of like a give. It's actually kind of locked in. The engineer guy I've actually become kind of close with, he kind of told me all the, the rundown on this. I actually ended up prototyping this machine like two years ago and like had gone through the generations of it. And at first it was like, this thing is gnarly. Like I not using this, there's no way. And then it just kind of broke down to like this, a, more of a fine tune vehicle. And um, I love it, you know, but um, I'm, it's it's tough because I'm not like sitting here trying to sell people on stuff. So like I always get asked, like, what do you think about it? And for me, it's really good. But for you, you might not like it, you know. So but overall, I, I really enjoy it out of all the, the machines I've used or all the pen style machines I've used. It's it's a solid, smooth machine. Um, I've been yeah. on a Bishop Rotaries for uh -huh. oh, a decade or more, more, 15 mm -hmm. years. And I love them. I love mm -hmm. them. I just love that direct drive. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can just the ink just goes yep. in, man. Mm -hmm. There's no like is it in there yeah. it's in there uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, that's cool that's Say. cool well let me you know i i know of you you're, you're just a really nice person a really um, <laughs> genuine guy i try and, to be yeah and that's that's something that i always love talking about is how important what it is we do i mean people you know they they trust us to change their physical appearance you know to and the pain that you're going to inflict on them and I just feel like there's a huge amount of responsibility in that and how important it is to really, really care about every single person that sits in that chair and on, on every level, not just, oh, I did a good tattoo. I did my job. Well, did you get them a pillow when their neck seemed a little crooked or did you get the date with get them a glass of water when they seemed thirsty? I mean, how do you kind of, I know you feel that way, but what's your, I mean, we can take it back to kind of what opened my eyes. Obviously, I mean, I've told you this, but like when I first met you, first time going to Guru um, off Garnett, and uh, I remember going there and just being baffled with how the the place was. Just the 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 quality of art. I've never seen anything like it. Um, the artist was there. I mean, it was you. I think yeah, Turk was there. Um, Hawthorne was there. Um, Obviously, Paul was there. Paul Dewey. Shout um, out to Paul Dewey. Yeah. He yeah. was doing a tattoo yeah, on you at that yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's a good friend of mine. I, he, I owe him a lot. He, he definitely kind of brought me into like this world. But I remember going there and just being like, this is crazy. I was so intimidated. I've never seen you. Had, you had some of the bodysuits, um, like your original one on the mm -hmm. wall. And I'm just like, this is crazy. <laughs> um, but then I remember getting tattooed and everybody was so friendly. And one of the biggest things I remember my first time getting tattooed is your front end manager guy. Um, was going around and just like asked if we need anything and he came up to me and was like hey we're gonna get lunch uh do you want any lunch and you guys ended up buying me like a sandwich or whatever and for me it was just like these are like the world's best artists <laughs> and they just like i mean i was young and like broke you know i'm spending all my money to get tattooed and <laughs> and like i mean I, I don't really have money for it, but no, no we got you you know we, we're gonna we'll cover you and you, you guys got me like lunch or whatever and i just remember like driving home and being like this is that was crazy. Like that's, I will give you all my money. 
like just off stuff like that you know like i don't I'll, I'll figure out how to get gas money home you know but like if like just the fact of like treating somebody like that and and, and it's like buying lunch it's, it's simple you know but like it meant the world you know like it really did and so that was a good base on kind of showing like quality of art and then just how to treat people and just like little things you know like I'm not saying I buy my clients lunch all the time, but if I'm gonna go get food or coffee or something, I mean, what's five, 10, 20, $30 when your client's spending, you know, thousands of dollars if they're getting a big piece by you. Like, and and for them, it means a lot, you know? So that's just treating them well and just being honest with your clients, being try to be, make sure they're comfortable, you know, I'm not try to baby the client, but definitely like, how you doing? Let me know if you need to take breaks. Like, don't try to be like a hard ass all the time, you know? Like, if you wanna take a stretch, just let me know and we'll do it. But yeah, I think, just going back to like seeing how you guys took care of your clients and just mm -hmm. overall the, the setup of, of like, you know, how everything was proper with like, you know, bed sheets and pillows. And I mean, I, you, you'd be surprised how like nice a pillow is getting tattooed, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, you want, you want two pillows for no problem. You know? So just like the comfort level is, is, is really nice. Well, I'm glad that, that you had that experience because I'm glad you were treated well at my shop, but you're right. And that, you know, to me, it just sends a message and then without saying it, you're sending a message and the message is I really care about you. And I think that is, is so huge because whether people want to admit it or not, they're scared, especially if they don't know their tattoo or yet they're, they act tough and they act cool, but inside they're terrified. They're like, how is this going to go? Is it going to be good? Does this guy give a shit about me? Is he having a bad day? Is his bad day going to ooze into my tattoo? All these things are going through their head. So the, the second you just say the simple thing, like, can I get you some water? How are you doing? Is your neck comfortable? Do you want another pillow? They immediately soften and be like, oh, okay, this is a nice guy who's gonna make sure I'm okay. And then when that energy sinks into them, our jobs get a hell of a lot it's, easier. It's so much easier. Yeah. You know? They sit longer, they're happier. You know, I've seen tattooers that in subtle ways send an energy field of, I'm gonna give you a good tattoo today, but don't fuck with me. Like, don't change much about it. You know, I'm nice, but just don't fuck with me. And their their clients never sit as long. And they're always the guy like, oh, why my my guys always stop after an hour and a half? I'm like, because you're you're not nurturing them. You're not helping them to be comfortable. You're not helping them to feel safe. And then they get their energies up here, and they get tired, and that hurts more. And it's sucking your energy too, because you have to hold that person as they're like inside their mind, like losing their shit, and you're. You know, the whole thing is so symbiotic and so easy, but it really does start with t tattooers need to be very caring people, I yeah. think is the really the end result. And I, I mean, a lot of these people coming in are so excited to get a piece by you, you know? So the last thing you want is them to leave and be like, yeah, I got a cool tattoo, but the guy or the girl was mean or awful or jerk, you know, like, um, and that, that would suck. And I've had, I've had clients, I've had good, I've been fortunate to tattoo a handful of um, tattoo artists and I've had good tattoo artist clients get tattooed by other artists. And I was like, Oh, let me see that piece you got. Oh, that thing's amazing. Like, yeah, it was, it's a good tattoo, but the experience sucked, you know, or like the just wasn't. So I, I don't know. I, I always try to be very, I mean, you can get me on a bad day. Don't get me wrong, but I still try to be in the moment and treat my clients with respect. And, and I'm just, I'm honest, you know, like I'm very truthful. I don't, I'm no BS when it comes just in general um, with everything. It's just, I am who I am, you know, and um, just try to treat them how, you know, I would like to be treated or going, you know. It's not so, that complicated. It's, not, it's, it's really it's, not. It's no. not that hard. Yeah. And you know, and like you said, once you get a tattoo and it may be not the best experience, every time you look at it, you don't get that feeling of like, yeah, mm -hmm. you get that feeling like, yeah. uh, Yes. You know? no, so it's like a permanent yeah. bummer yeah. embedded in your skin. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. just that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Well, yeah. let's let's shift gears a little bit. I mean, a lot of people out there might not know this, but you am I fair to say when you were younger, you were a professional BMX racer? Uh-huh. You were pro. I was pro. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. And that was and I know you still ride bikes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And I know you even get on that BMX bike once in a while. I saw a video a while uh -huh. back where you did something. Uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, um, <laughs> I, I switched more mountain bikes now, still a lot of fun. BMX is just, the tracks are a little too far now, but mountain bike can go hop out of the house and, and, you know, hour and a half ride and it'd be good, you know? Um, but yeah, growing up, I started racing bikes. I mean, I guess we can go down the whole story yeah. when I was like nine jumped right into it. You know, I've always ridden bikes was like a little kid or whatever. I was, I guess I was decent at it, you know, but then right when I started racing, I got really good real quick. And, um, I raced till I was about 18, um, expert level. And then 
quit. I just got so burnt out. I went through high school um, and I just wanted end of senior year. I just wanted to start experiencing like school and stuff, you know, and quit for a few years then came back when I was like 21 and just kind of jump right back into it. Raced a couple years amateur, won a couple little amateur title things and then turned pro. And then, yeah. That and was are that. you drawing along these, these years? Not yet. Happening? So it came in art was I was going to school for graphic design and then I was racing a lot and I just didn't know what I wanted to do yet. And then I got into working at this shop again as like a front end they needed I needed like training for racing takes a lot of time you know and I needed and then that traveling so I was always gone a lot so I needed a job that was pretty nice. lax so I ended up working at a friend's tattoo shop John Diendas oh um, yeah yeah, oh, yeah. That's John's so he spot. yeah so yeah. he brought me in as like a front end manager shop he already knew me from outcast that I kind of know what's going on and I'm a mm -hmm. straightforward guy that I can handle it so yeah I brought in through that and then yes racing was very serious but then I was just kind of looking at some of the numbers of like what you can make racing. And then I saw, not saying it's all about money, but I'm just trying to look plan for the future, you know? And I saw some like what, you know, I was starting to draw tattoos for some of the guys at the shop. And I'm like, hey, I, I remember drawing this dragon tattoo for one of the artists there and he gave me 20 bucks. And I think he made four or 500 bucks off of this. And I was just like, oh wow, like that's, that's yeah. wild, you know? So I just started seeing the numbers that were coming in and then the racing numbers and the effort that was going into that was pretty tough and i was a little bit older on the pro range mm -hmm. um so i was getting towards like 27 28 where realistically to be like moving at pro you need to be like 19 20 to kind of so you, you saw that was it, just it, just it just wasn't yeah yeah it was gonna end it was gonna end so um I mean, it was fun and it got me a lot of good. Um, I mean, all my first tattoos are like most of my BMX buddies. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, like, like they were the best BMXers in the world. Mm -hmm. So you tattoo a handful of these guys. And next thing you know, it's like everybody else. It's like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Got they, tattooed they got your they, name they, out they, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, I want to tattoo. And they, everybody's pretty open. So they're like kind of do do whatever you know so um that it was a big it was a really good base for me on on um getting started in, in tattooing well it's just interesting because you're a hell of an illustrator dude I, I really think you can draw shit really cool i, I you're really yeah. gonna be humble but it's just rare that people that draw at your level usually it's you know it's just from they draw their whole lives and you kind of fiddled around and fiddled and then got serious later on and was able to become as good as you are at it. I think what helped with BMX too is I'm extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. um, very, like very, well, very. You have very, to be to, go, very, yeah. to be a professional, yeah, yeah. you know, so athlete. So me not being good at something is not it, acceptable. Is not acceptable. You know, it's it just, I only do, I, I, I just, I do things that I know I'm gonna be decent at, you know? So like, or try to, so I, I go, full bore with it you know so like growing up it was you know bikes art and then surfing you know so like that's about it i don't try to like waste energy and stuff i can't you know i can't go half ass into something so the competitive side of bmx and then my competitiveness into drawing just i just hate not being good at something so that strives me to push and how did like, you get i mean what was it like who did you who were your main inspirations in the original days it was because this is before instagram or is, it was before Instagram. So this is like magazines. This and, was magazines. I'm, obviously, you're a big one. Paul Dewey. All, pretty much all the guys at the at your shop mm -hmm. were, were big influences. Um, I always have been into like faces and like it wasn't really called neo-traditional back in the right, day, right. but it was like this new school even weird. Yeah, there was. Um, I mean, he's still around. He he's probably like the uh, he's yeah Lars Uwe. Um, <laughs> Is, Whose lips? Yep. Uh, Emily Rose Murray. Oh, another was, one. Yeah. Um, was a big influence back in the day. Uh, Eckel, Uncle Alan. Uncle Alan. Um, yeah, I just, they were huge influences back. They were like probably like the originators. And I remember this is a, like I, starting up, there wasn't, you there wasn't really Instagram yet. So you would try to draw like them. And then I think Instagram did start and they, they had Instagrams a little, but like you still, like I remember me trying to draw a lot like them and I would get so frustrated because that's not me. So I think there's a turning point to where I finally like had a somewhat of a base, but it was like, I got to stop drawing, okay. trying to force myself to draw like them because I'm not in it. And it's like, so I kind of like, I guess you can take aspects of how they do things and then let just let the guard down and just let me draw, you know? And that's, that's how it works, right? Yeah. It, start, it starts yeah. with 
emulating, uh-huh. hell, even copying to some degree, uh-huh. developing skills. And yeah. then at some point you don't need that scaffolding anymore. And then, yeah. but you've got a base and then yeah. you let your own creativity, you know, and whatever that is, what is creativity? Where does it come from? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Is, I, it, is it, is it, I heard, I've heard it described. It's, it's, uh, it's literally God. It's the, the force that created the universe. I think everybody, I think every human is a creative. Mm-hmm. We're all creative. Yes. You know, you happen to draw mm-hmm. and do tattoos, me too. But everyone, every human has this urge to create and think of novel things. Like, oh, I could make a better taco. I would do this if I made a taco. It could be that simple. But it seems to be what separates us from all other animals. Uh-huh. You don't see other anything but humans yeah. doing this thing. But um, I often ask myself that question. I, I don't. People say to me, "Where did that idea come from?" And I go, "I don't know. I just it just where does it come from? It just clicks in there. Yeah. Like I think this would look cool, and then you just keep building off. Yeah. Of it. That's an interesting subject, creativity. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I yeah. Don't either. Um. I don't think anyone really does. Actually, yeah. it's kind of yeah. a trick question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not Do too you sure. Have, are you a spiritual man? Do you have a spiritual practice or anything um, like yeah, that? Yeah, I grew up, um, you know, Christian. Okay. Um, strong like base in that with like family growing up and whatever. Um, yeah, I just um, I'm not too. I, I've watched some of your stuff. I'm not like too into the. Um, I mean, I'm not knowledgeable and too of the like the all the other stuff. But, um, yeah, I guess I, you know, pray and have faith. So that leads me to like, what's a, like a, what's a day. Tell me your typical day, not a vacation or anything. Maybe just a typical work day. Do you have a very strict routine? Um, What is your routine? When do you get up? What do you eat? How long do you work? (laughs) And what, you know, tell Um, me that. I love hearing what people Typical day, get up or between six and seven. Okay. Um, Pretty early riser. Yeah. Dep- I like mornings. I mean, I don't, I, do too. I don't like to talk too much in the mornings, mm. but I, I do like my mornings. Um, and depending on what time the dog gets us up, like, yeah, between six and seven. You and your wife, cause you're a married man. Yes. No kids. No kids. No. Yeah. Get up, get some breakfast. Um, what, what, what you got to eating? What are you pretty, you're, you look like, I mean, you're an athlete. You're a fit guy. <sighs> are you strict about these things? Do you have a strict, like, I eat this way? Not really, but I don't eat crazy bad. I just kind of am aware of what I eat. So, um, yeah, coffee, normally, like, some eggs, oatmeal, some sort of protein mixed with it, maybe. Uh, Just kind of varies, you know. Overnight's oats we've been into. some Maybe some juice. Pretty mellow, you know. And then kind of just hang out for a bit, relax. And then wife will go to work. And then I'll get my draw time in. I I always just draw better in the morning. Me too around 8 30 till 10 30 11 depending on when i have to get ready for work uh, it's pretty much drawing you know so um yeah then get ready for work go to work most of my points are at one yeah go with when tattoo. does lunch happen lunch is before work yeah so you have a little food yeah. before you start your tattoos yeah. for the day yeah what do you like to, what, what, what what's your like my thing is i like four or five hour sessions you know Same. five-ish is yeah about five hour uh-huh. i start feeling agitated mm-hmm. and just not firing yeah. on all cylinders Same. and it's, I just don't want to be doing it anymore. And yeah. We've all had to push into the seven hours, uh-huh. eight hours because the guy's got a flight to catch. You're like, fuck it. I'll have another coffee. Yeah. You get this done. But is that the similar thing with you and the big projects? Yeah. And I think with clients too, I mean. One client a day. One client a day always. Yeah. Yeah. Four days a week I work, sometimes three. But uh, yeah, one client a day. Uh, they get my, yeah, obviously full attention. But I, I like four or five hours, unless I'm like, close to finishing a, a, a mm. finishing a piece like that's your that's that's pretty the, good that's the yeah magic four spot. four to five is 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 the magic spot i think clients too around that four hour mark mm. really start struggling yep and i do work quick so you get a good chunk done in that amount of time so i i before appointment i'll go in like kind of like having an idea on where i want to be if it's a larger project by the end of the day and um we definitely normally always hit that a lot of times like yesterday i worked on the back and we hit it probably in like my my goal of what i was hoping to get done in like kind of three hours so she was sitting very well and yeah we got about like three three and a half hours yesterday so your day is exactly my day that's exactly how i work same rise out of bed same morning same draw time in the morning always i mean 
I maybe I drew at night or I have to for a deadline, but it, I just do yeah. so much better in the morning when I'm fresh and caffeine's kicking in. Sorry, going back to that too, some mornings I do, uh, if I don't have drawing or if I get done with the drawing in time, I will go for like a bike ride or a surf. Put fitness um, in there. Throw some sort of fitness. Mm -hmm. um, at, yeah, at least a handful of times a week. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, after work, I'm a, I mean, I'm a family guy. Uh, I love hanging out with my wife and my dog. So like, it's time to chill. Time to chill. Yeah. Get home, make some dinner. Um, turn work off for the rest turn, of the night. Yep, do it done. again tomorrow. Yeah, and then yeah, we'll end up watching a movie. Just kind of relax, and and that's about it. You know, sometimes I will get like a rough sketch in. The wife will go to bed a little bit before me. I might spend an hour, or not even sketching, but just thinking about the next project I have to work on and even getting like notes on a piece of paper, just very rough. But at night, like if I'm tired at night, yeah, it's rough. Or I've had a few glasses of wine, like it's not as, it's not as creative, you know, it's, it's yeah. I, do, I never do that. Yeah. I'm always like, Hey, if, uh, if I have to, I'll just get up at four. Yeah. Like I'd rather get up at four mm -hmm. than try to get it done at night. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of tattooers are so different. So yes, many tattooers, they're yeah. like, yeah, I get going about 1 a.m., draw till like the sun comes up yeah, it's wild <laughs> most of my, most of those guys are single without kids <laughs> i will add yeah. <laughs> but i yeah i do know a handful of artists that they draw a lot at night yeah um yeah and it just i mean i've gone through i mean i've tattooed in a while now and and i know what kind of works for me and the, and the balance and whatnot and i just i get too burnt out if i draw too much or whatever and you know if i have to like paint or do something like that like i just i'll get too burnt out you know so i think balancing it with family time and hanging out with the family kind of helps recharge the batteries, I guess you could say. It's a good routine, man. That's the one I'm on. You know, and in, in there, I heard something that I love to talk about, which is I always, and you probably, it sounds like you do this. I, I always have a plan too. And I always share that plan with the client. I tell them straight up, okay, here's my goal today. I want to shade this. And we're, I think we can get to here. And yeah, I think that's so important because I just believe in synergy, right? So if they're thinking it, okay, we're going to shade. He said he's going to shade from here to here. And we're in agreement on it. It's just two people focused on the goal. Because I've also seen tattooers, they don't really say anything. They're just like, okay, you ready to go? And they're nice guys and they're doing all the other stuff. But the client is, does has no clue. He's lost. He's yeah. lost. Is he, are you doing color? Are you doing shading? Are we going on the inner arm, the lower arm? They, they even come at him and the guy doesn't even know where that needle's going to land. It's like, is he coming at my wrist or is he coming at my chest plate? You know? It's like, tell me, tell them what you're going to do. Get them on board. Make a teammate out of this person, you know? Yeah, especially, I mean, if you're doing big projects, I know everybody works different, but do each his own. But I definitely like to keep my clients in the loop on what's going on. And just, like, it goes back to making them feel comfortable. It does. Know? Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. going to feel more comfortable, more secure if they understand what you're about to do yeah. and what your goal is. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought you might say. I, I just had a feeling. You <laughs> seem like the kind of guy that, that, that lives that type of life. That's a healthy lifestyle. Is what you're doing. Sure. It's a very healthy, clean lifestyle. Let me ask you, like, I mean, do you ever get stressed? You seem chill, chill. Yeah, certain things, but like, yeah. what stresses you out? Um, like, what would be an example of what would stress you out? Because how we handle stress is such a big thing on how we. I think um, my hardest part is getting ideas down. Mm -hmm. Like, if some, like, so I'll get stressed out on. Um, I mean, are we talking about like art stress or just in life well, in general? Anytime okay. stress. I mean, I can, we can go to two types of stress that stress me out. Um, running late <laughs> um, or being like rushed to something. I hate being rushed. Uh, I like to be prepared. Um, my appointments are at one. I try to get there at, at least like an hour beforehand, set up, get food, just be ready for the client. Mm. Uh, I don't like to be rushed. I don't like to be rushed going to the airport. Like I just, I want to chill, you know? <laughs> And then the other thing will stress me out is like, just, I, mean, I guess you could say stress is like creating a, a piece. My hardest part is getting the ideas down on a piece of paper first and figuring out what, what works, you know? And I mean, there's been numerous times where I will have a drawing almost done and then let it go for a few days and then go back to it and be like, that looks like, no, I, that sucks, you know? So then I'll go back to it and, and do that. So just that stress of doing that. And then sometimes like if, it, if I get too flustered when I try to be creative on, on designing something, I just take a breather. I'll go for a bike ride or a surf and, and come back to it. I read somewhere, I don't even remember where, that it was about a book but for creatives. And they were talking about brain scans that they do in that early phase when an artist is trying to basically the creative phase because after you've got the idea down and if you've been doing a certain subject matter long enough it sort of rolls after that you kind of know what to do after that but like how the placement and what choices you're going to make that's the 
That's the create the most creative part of the journey. And I get the same way. I get this like stressful anxiety, frustration. And these brain scans showed like synapses during that feeling that open up that they think is basically broadening your ability to create. It's almost like a necessary part of it. You're going to feel frustrated and uncomfortable in that beginning phase. And in that frustration and discomfort ignites, lights some fuse in you that makes it happen. I don't know if it's true or not, but it does seem to happen on every project I've ever done. I mean, unless it's just some brainless thing I've done a hundred times, but when you take on the big ones, they're like, I'm going to do the best back piece of my career or the best painting of my career. And you're in there just trying to shit out the best idea that's better than anything you've ever done before. I get really frustrated. I don't know if that's stress. It's just uncomfortable feeling, but stress is a funny thing. Yeah. I don't even know if it really exists. I think it's just a, Sometimes life feels uncomfortable. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can call it stress or you can just call it, I feel uncomfortable. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Nervousness, stress that, I mean, it goes back to like BMX too. I was being like stressed for races or nervous kind of that. I'll sometimes try to take that same energy and then with tattooing and be like, all right, well, how'd I get through it back in the day when I had a big race or something and I was super stressed out about and all this and try to put those same aspects into tattooing. Well, you, you had to work with it a lot yeah. in a competitive professional yeah. athletic yeah. career. I mean, uh -huh. talk about stress, you're up yeah. at the gate and it's like, yeah. am I going to win or am I going to lose? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's trying a more to block some things out and the, the mental aspect of things and, right. and whatnot. And I wish I had a little bit better of mental aspect on that. Cause I think sometimes the stress could take over on that or, you know, start doubting yourself. And I think it start it always good with tattooing. So then you can doubt yourself when you're drawing and to trying to overcome those hurdles of that self doubt of, you know, being creative or yes, I can do this. I can win. I can, I'll pull this off, you know, just, self -doubt. just fi fi figure it out. You know? Sel self doubt. That's yeah. a bit, I often tell people that are, will want to become artists or be tattoo artists. I'm like, you know, in my opinion, if, if you really want to grow uh, and find out what you're made of, this is a great career to do that because art really challenges your ability to love yourself because you can just be so like, I suck. Yeah. I can't do this. That guy's better. Like it, it really challenges you to learn how to be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, I did the best I could yesterday. Today's a new day. Mm -hmm. Forgive yourself. I can do this. Find that self-worth, find yeah. that self-confidence. It's kind of a, I don't know. I almost feel like it's a spiritual journey, the mastery mm -hmm. of a, of a craft or yeah. art form. Uh huh. Yeah. Stress is a funny one. I think about it a lot. I have a, <laughs> a busy life uh, with a lot of, I have wife, I have kids, I have businesses, employees, and I, I try not to use the word stress anymore. I just say the word, yeah, today uh, I'm, I'm feeling very kind of tense and uncomfortable, but that's just the way today feels. And I'm going to just keep moving forward. That's my other thing. It's like, just keep moving forward. <laughs> Take another step and it's, and you will get, and it'll be a new day. Yeah. I'm working with that's that. A, that's one. a good perspective. Yeah. Well, I, another, another book I read, it was about all these very successful people and they weren't just financially successful. They had great marriages and, and relationships and careers and money and health. And they were trying to figure out what was the common denominator. And they were all self-made. You know, these weren't people that were coming from set up from a wealthy family or anything. And the biggest common denominator they found was they just never gave up. They just would get up no matter how bad the day before was, they would shuck it off and get up and do it again and get up and do it again and stick to it. They, I think they call it the stick to it factor. So I try to remember that when I have the rough ones, I'm just like, yeah. okay, wasn't the best day tomorrow. Yeah. We, we do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got another chance for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, going back to kind of that aspect of like self-doubt as an artist, I think that is good because that does push you to become better, you know, because I see some people out there that are like, I am sad. You should never be satisfied. Right. They think they're already there. They are, you're, you're never. And then gonna, once you say yeah. that, the growth stuff. Yeah. You're never going to be the best. Um, mm -hmm. You're never going to be there. You're going to be frustrated with, I mean, I, I'll say it like, I, get frustrated with not all my tattoos but like you're never 100 percent satisfied with any of your tattoos ever. i'll say it more clearly yeah. i don't have a single tattoo i've ever done that i can tell you that's it wouldn't change a single thing not not i mean yeah not at all i mean I, there's every single tattoo there's you get done you're like eh. some are, maybe it might be a little bit more better than others that you are happy with but there's never one you're like nope 
that, that I, I couldn't have done better. No, there's always. So having that is such a huge driving factor. But I think, I mean, you see it, you see people that are opposite and, oh, this is good enough. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm crushing it, you know, so. Or the other one who beats themselves up so much that it just ruins their career. Like you got to be- can't handle that, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's why I said, be gentle with yourself. You know, I, I've got, you know, people that work with me here, here at Guru and I've seen them just torturing themselves over something they felt could have been better. And I'm like, look, let me ask you a question. When you drew that or tattooed that, were you trying your best? Yeah, man, I was trying my absolute best. Did you come in prepared? Did you come in sober and well-rested? And yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, then that's it. What else could you have done? I mean, that's everything you had that day. <laughs> so as long as you're always giving everything you have in any given moment to whatever any given thing is, whether it's a marriage or raising kids or drawing a sick tattoo, I think if you're doing that, then the forgiveness for if it didn't go perfect comes a little quicker. Yeah. You just be like, all right, I forgive myself. I'll do better today. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's an important part of, a, I think, an artist's career. Yeah. You know, what What about advice? There's so many young new faces coming into tattooing oh, i mean man. it's it well first of all we can both agree on this the amount of talent that has entered this field is staggering uh -huh. it's absolutely staggering i think you have seen we just it's, flip on the instagram yeah. like don't yeah. know this guy's name yeah. killing it killing yeah. it who the hell is this who, yeah you know all these countries too like who uh -huh. knew what the hell was happening in spain and in europe and poland and yeah australia like the guys in australia are just and they have their yeah. own scene happening. That's actually, sorry, it. another huge influence of me, uh, Sam Clark. Oh, he's, yeah. Back in the day, he's OG. He's and, Australian, right? Yeah. And also one of the nicest guys ever. Never yeah. met him, but. Yeah. Uh, I've never met him, but just messages and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He's always. Yeah, we do DMs. So, yeah, back. always so grateful and nice mm -hmm. um, on any, like, thing I've messaged him. And it's, you generally tell he he's mm -hmm. truly thankful for, for that. So, mm -hmm. like, stuff like that is, um, it's cool. You know, yeah. it's, it's really cool to see. Uh, well, with all that happening in the in the stuff we talked about earlier with with AI and with iPads tips. and what do you say to the young guy? Because I, you know, just the other day I was actually I had a little get together at my house last night and um, there was a woman there who has a, a client whose son wants to be a tattooer. They had asked her to ask me advice and I was like, well, she's like, he's really not super motivated and not super talented. And I, and I hope they're not listening to this, but I didn't use any names, but I said, I would stay the fuck away. <laughs> it's like, I would run like that worked when I got in, like you could be okay and make a good living those days gone. In my opinion, and you, you can't be in the top 10% at some point, maybe not the first year, but some point in your career, get up in that top crust. I just don't think it's a very um, it's tough, good career anymore. Yeah. You've got to be very it's, good. It is very, I mean, I, we, I talk about this in coworkers all the time. It's very cutthroat. So if you're just an average Joe or a you know regular tattoo artist, that's good, but you're not putting it out there. Then, I mean, it's, there's so many good art. It's just like, what are you going to do to stand out between the rest, you know, but going back to tips, I tattoo a handful of artists that always ask me this question. Now you tell they're kind of nervous when they, and I'm an open book. So anybody gets tattooed by me or I don't, you don't hide your equipment hide, or your no, ink I'll, or needles. I'll give you <laughs> like samples of stuff I use. Here, try this. Do you like this? Go ahead. It, right. I mean, like I, I'm full open book on, on how I tattoo. Watch me uh, ask any questions you want. You know, I just think, like you said, put your head down. Big thing for me back in the day was how can I do it better when I first started as if or different or form my style. So if somebody came in and wanted a butterfly, how can I make it as like a walk in or whatever? How can I make it so it kind of stands out? So it's not that standard butterfly that you see everywhere the one with the shadow or anything you know there's the one that like so okay how do i make it so they're like oh, okay that looks different you know that looks like you know and then and then it kind of formed into like how did, did matt show do this or like to try to form a stuff how can i make this whether it's so the simplest walk-in how can i make this that it, it kind of stands out it's a little bit different it has a little bit of like my twist to it mm -hmm. so i think just forming your style and not kind of getting wrapped up all like social media is very good but it's also a lot of smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. um there's a lot of filters there's a lot i mean we can go down this subject we'll be on here for I, another I, hour i know for a fact yeah. people that have taken their tattoo photographs brought them in the procreate mm -hmm. colored on yeah. them and then yeah. posted it on back yeah. up on on their uh, page yeah 
There's I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I'll swear on yeah. my on my kids' lives right now. I've never done it. Yeah. Never it's, would. It's wild. Yeah. But that's why I know when I'm flicking through there, I'm starting to get to this point. Like, how much is this, is this real? Yeah. Face is all buffed out, you know, and a lot of this stuff nowadays, like, and I think we all learn on like through the process of what's going to last the year. So it's, it's a, there's that dancing of like, how's it going to look now? And then how's it going to look five years from now? And how can I find that like wiggle room to where it has that longevity with it, you know, and we learn, I think that's part of the learning process of, of getting frustrated as well, but like learning the process of, of how can I keep the longevity of this tattoo yet keep my style in it, you know? So I would say, yes, you want to be kind of connected with social media, but don't just, if you're a good artist and you draw and you put your head down, good things will come, you know, like it really get yeah, uh, drawings. One thing like just draw and paint and, and just put your head down. Don't worry about TikTok videos. And I mean, not, I'm, I'm going to sound like a hater, but I want to see tattoos. I, I mean, I, I, I want to see, I like photos of tattoos. I don't need to see, I mean, there are some funny tattoo TikToks and stuff like there, but I, I don't, I want to see just how cool the tattoo looks. I don't, I don't want to see someone jumping around you know, and then the tattoo, you know? So I, I think just, and maybe that's the road we're going. Maybe I'm just getting old. I mean, and, I, I, I don't I'm know, with like, you on that, but I don't know either because yeah, sometimes either. these young tattooers, they are so good at the TikTok stuff uh -huh. and doing the, the foam reveal yeah. and whatever the, whatever's trending. And next thing you know, they, yeah. they've got you know, a zillion yeah. followers yeah. and they're, you know, more busy. And that's what brought me, we talked about this with, a, I was talking about my coworker, Brad, the other day, are we to a point or coming to a point where clients are more, satisfied seeing their tattoos and them on social media than in real life are they happier just having it on there you know like that they got posted on this popular person's page than not caring on how bad it looks or whatever in in real life they're almost happier that you know they're right. on social media and right. it's like that we live in this like virtual world now they don't really care and what if it, you don't post it they wonder yeah you must yeah. have not like yeah, it you must not like it so it's like <laughs> did, yeah i i know i always talk about i, I post i mean i I'm fortunate I've built enough um, following now to where I, I don't have to post as much That's that stress of and anxiety of like trying to get the good photo or whatever. So I don't stress out as hard because taking photos is so it's so hard on a tattoo. It's it's so I, I barely post. I'm like, I don't know, 5% of my tattoos I do. I, I maybe post if that. You oh, know? really? So I yeah, know that. I, I'll post more stories now just right. to kind of keep engagement because you don't want to I don't want to fall off the map, you right. know, and I. And at the end of the day, people want to see your tattoos, you mm -hmm. know, like, so I always have like through the years, I've, I've always kind of asked myself and I've been asked by coworkers and clients, like, what do you want to see? Do you, do you like to see progress shots like me posting the line drawing of a back or do you just want to see the final product, you know? And, and, and I think people and even myself and I, and I go back and I'll ask myself this too, is like, I kind of like to see the process. I like to see, okay, this is two sessions in or three sessions. Wow. Wow. Let's see this thing transform, you know? So I like that too. having that. Yeah. Final. And I kind of, I just try to stay true to myself and on how I like to see things on social media. And I, I keep it at mm -hmm. that. I know we kind of got off subject, but like going back to tips on people, I just say, be, just try to be yourself. Don't, don't form to what everybody's doing mm -hmm. on there. You want to, I mean, you got to do a little bit of like kind of what's trending, but don't go full bore, like worry about exactly what social media is is doing you or know, look so. at this is my style because that's a style that's hitting hard right now so that's your that's yes. my style you yes. know that yeah. is happening though. it is it yeah. is yeah yeah though being authentic is <laughs> that really can't go wrong in life in general be you know and that's that's a hard thing to do really uh, letting down your guard taking down the masks being vulnerable and you know seeing how the world accepts you or, or doesn't accept you that's that's a difficult thing to do and an, and an art, artist has to do it even more because we're putting out our stuff for the world to criticize you know so yeah you got to find some confidence in there to just be like fuck it that's me and just keep being you i think that's good advice i i do when you're starting tattooing you start posting stuff take a good photo yeah i'd rather and i see so many artists that don't I mean, it, it's got a sheen of glitter across the face. I can't see what that looks like because you have it, it, it's like so it, Vaseline you're, or something. You, exactly. <laughs> you're better off or there's blood on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're better off not posting it. Right. Than posting it. Curate you know? a high quality yeah. page. Yes, exactly. Right. And then and I'm, another big thing that helped me was when I first started, it was doing free tattoos or hugely discounted tattoos. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've done that well 
deeply into like um deep into my like midway of my career okay mm -hmm. you want to get a back tattoo by me i'll i'll cut you a huge break if you let me just kind of run my style mm -hmm. and, and build my portfolio because that's like it's huge you know so once yeah. you do a couple people start asking yep. for it but yep. you got to get those couple in there yep. somehow you yep. know mm -hmm. yeah that, that's good advice too yeah. very good advice uh -huh. well very cool dude um you know I'm excited today because I love your work a lot and you're going to tattoo me today. Yep. I'm fucking stoked. <laughs> and I, I just said, uh, a moth, you mm -hmm. know, I, I was thinking of your girl heads and stuff, but I, I knew we only had a small amount of time. I'm like, if I got a girl head, I think I'd want it to be like the size of an actual yeah. human head, you know? Uh -huh. So I'm like, Oh, I, and I love, I've had real affinity to, to subject matter. That's tattooed the size it is in real life. Mm -hmm. I just like, if you do a rose and you, yeah. and it's the size of a rose you see in a garden, yep. it looks bitching. And when yep. you do it tinier, or I guess you can do it bigger, bigger sometimes work. But anyway, I was looking through there. You do some really cool moths. I'm like, Thanks, Oh, I've got some flames on my knee, cool. moth to a yeah. flame, which is sort of my lifestyle and my personality. <laughs> um, so you were going to show, I haven't even yeah. seen this drawing. Okay. Let's yeah. see it. Can I see it now? Yeah, I'll show it to you. All right, let's take a look at it. This is the best part of this show. This is... Maybe something like oh, that. Oh, yes. I love it. 100% love it. Totally Tischler. Love the colors. I like the crescent moon touch. I mean, obviously, that's like how I say, we can always adjust colors, change certain things if you want. But yeah, oh. thanks to Procreate, we can, there's adjustments are easy. So yeah. look at that, everybody. All right. That's going on right above my knee on my right leg today. You know what I think we should do now? I think we should get to work and then we'll come back over here when it's over talk a little bit more about a few of the things I wanted to go through. I'll have gotten this kind of a, kind of become a little bit of a baby as I've gotten older. <laughs> I've gotten a few on the show recently and I get through them, but I'm just sitting there like, Jesus Christ, I don't remember it being this bad. You know, when I had half my, you know, most of my torso tattooed, I, I forgot. But you, I know how gentle you'll be with me today. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I don't have the heaviest hand, so we'll see. But that area is a little spicy. Yeah. Side yeah. of the knee, top of the mm -hmm. knee. Let's do it. Cool. All right, let's do it. High five. Yeah, buddy. Boom. How's he treating here? Dude, this guy's got the hands of an angel. You know? It's like I can barely <laughs> feel what he's doing down there. It's true though, you have a light touch. I think this has been a very easy task. Nice. What do we got? I can feel the love, I can feel the caring <laughs> coming out of this man. Making See sure I'm comfortable and I'm happy. He asked me if I need to pull out. I told him I was okay. I think a big thing too, and I see it a lot, like one of my co-workers, is how you kind of like touch, touch. Ah, dude, thank you. For sure, dude. It's beautiful, it's <laughs> awesome, and most of all, it's pure Tischler. <laughs> you guys will see photos of this on the video, but it's your style, and it's, it's uh, like I said in the beginning, huge fan of your work. Thanks, dude. And what it's an honor. What, well, my honor too. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Cheers. Cool, hey, let's hey. do a toast to that. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers, man. Tink. Tinky's out. <laughs> right on. Well, um, we're not going to be here much longer, but I did also want to say we've done these bodysuit shows now for the last 15 years. We've done two of them. They're called Commitment. You know this. Commitment 1, Commitment 2. And this November, November 11th, we're going to do Commitment 3. It's going to be at the Adams Avenue Theater, Normal Heights here in San Diego. And the big announcement is... Matt Tischler is going to do a bodysuit for the Commitment 3 show. Mm -hmm. Now you are now you have to do it, dude. I know. I know. If you were thinking of backing out. Yeah. <laughs> can't do it now. <laughs> you can't yeah. do that now. Yeah. No, dude. I mean, you're going to do something awesome. No, I'm stoked. Um, I I mean, I from day one going into Guru and seeing those on the wall, I've always first wanted one. And then now to be a part of it is, is pretty cool. 
Well, yeah. you're going to be in there with us all with a lot of other amazing tattooers. I'm not going to go through the list right now on the show, but it's obviously a lot of guru guys and a lot of our friends like yourself and Jamie Goodwin and Febs and Bill Canales and a number of other just talented dudes. So I think it's going to be an amazing show. And I'm just stoked that uh, you're going to be a part of it. I think it's super appropriate, especially considering your history with Guru and Paul and the shows back in the day. Hell, you have one of my suits hanging in your studio, and that's every time I see a picture of you in there, I'm just like, oh. I got the oh, I got some old ones too. Do you? Um, I have. I think it was not not the first show, the one with a lot of the gold filigree. Oh um, yeah, yeah, with the angel and angel and all that out. one. Yeah, I have yeah, I have that one as well. Full size. No, okay. no, the, the minis. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So. Well, um, when this new show comes out, I'll have a very nice print for you. I don't know what I'm going to make, but I'll make something cool, and you're getting one whether you want it or not. So, um, well, let me let me wrap up with this. Future goals. Any big future goals for you? Or is it just Tattooing steady? or just in life, life in general? In tattooing, um, it could be any of it. I, oh, man. Just keep going, just steady keep as she pushing. goes. Yeah. Um, try to be a good husband. We have good kids. Be a good father. Treat people well, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I just stay humble, I guess, you know, and, and keep pushing. That's the I, two big things is for me is staying humble and like always pushing yourself to, to get better, you know. You still have the fire, dude. You can see it in your work. You're not sitting back. You could. You could just sit back. You got your clients. You got your style. But I can see with each piece, you're like a little more of this, a little less of that. And you're really, and a lot bigger stuff too. I've seen a lot more yeah. big work. I have more fun doing that. I think when it's all said and done, it just kind of like same with seeing those, the body suits and stuff, the, the paintings, you just see those in person. You're like, wow. So see a client finish actual, a, a big project. It just, it looks so much cooler. It's very rewarding. Yeah. Even though they take a long time. They do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, keep doing what you're doing. You're an inspiration to me and, a, and and tons of the people I work with here at this shop. So keep it up. We love you. We love your art. Um, we love your tattooing. And um, where can people find you? Um, What's your inst Instagram? Just, just say Tish Tattoo. Tish Tattoo. Yeah. T I S H Tattoo. T I S H Tattoo. I work at Dana Point Tattoo and Dana Point. Right. Um, I have a website as well, but uh, occasionally I'll throw prints on there that you can buy. But other than that, I'm uh, pretty mellow. And if you yeah. just type in in Google Matt Tischler T I S C H L E R, all your stuff comes up. Yeah, really Not too hard that. to find. Yeah. Cool. Well, if any of you guys out there are uh, looking to get a sweet tattoo from this man, I highly recommend that you do. You know where to find him, and uh, I guarantee you, you're going to be happy. So I thank you again Thanks, for buddy. my new cute little moth. He's going to. I mean, look at that. That's the one I stare at when I. <laughs> Heck yeah. Sit all the time. No matter where I'm sitting, I'm not going to get down that path. <laughs> well, thank you again, my friend. Yeah, Cheers to you. Yeah, man. And uh, thank you. I'll be seeing more of yeah. you soon. Mm. All right, everybody. That's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. We've been getting so many comments, likes, and subscriptions. Please keep them coming. I totally appreciate it. And let me know. You guys want to see somebody. I've had so many people. How come you haven't had this guy on the show or that guy on the show? Write me or write them and have them write me. I'm open to suggestions. I want to put people on, not just tattoo artists, but anybody that was out there pushing the envelope and doing things that are unusual and leaning into life. That stuff's exciting. Those people's stories is, is exciting. So if you got somebody you can think of and, and that loves tattoos or at least likes tattoos, send them my way. So that's it for today, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.